last day of the second to last unit. That's right. Okay. No wave today. People at home don't want to see the wave. All right. This would be my out of control class, if you can't tell at home. Um, anyway, we are going to be looking at electrolytic cells. And in order to start this, water is usually a big component in electrolysis. Um, if I were to ask you, does water decompose spontaneously? <laughs> Barrage said, yeah. No, it ionizes. It doesn't decompose. What do I mean by, by decompose? It goes into hydrogen and oxygen gas. So let me ask that again. Does water decompose spontaneously? No. Very good. So we have to run an electric current through water in order to make that happen. And so what we're going to do first is write the two half reactions that occur when we run that electricity through the water. In other words, when we, it says hydrolysis of water, when we actually electrolyze it. So water can both be oxidized and reduced. So we're going to take water first and oxidize it. I have some shortcuts for actually memorizing these half reactions. I do want you to know them. Um, when water is oxidized, it produces a gas. When it's oxidized, it produces gas. which gas? Oh, my, oh my gosh. <laughs> oxygen. All right. Why is this oxidation? Oxygen here is a negative 2 oxidation state in water and 0, so that is going up in charge. That's oxidation. So then it's reduced. What other gas then has to be produced? Hydrogen gas. So hydrogen went from a plus 1 to 0, which is down. So that's reduced. Now another thing you need to know about the half reactions of water, one of them is going to be acidic and one's going to be basic because we know that water is, has both qualities. Um, so oxidation is acidic, reduction is basic. How do you remember that? Well, consonants and vowels. Okay. So what makes something acidic? H plus, and what makes something basic? OH minus. So there's our two half reactions. All right. What we need to do now is balance those half reactions. Um, we have water going to O2. So let's start off by getting our O's to balance. So what do we need now? Four. Now I've got to balance charge. How many electrons what side? Four electrons. All right. Now we have water going to H2 and OH minus. So if I have, this is kind of like HOH, so I need an extra one there, correct? And then that means I have two waters, so I need two OHs. So where do I add the electrons on this one? On the left, so I'm going to do two electrons. Okay, so you need to know those half reactions. Then it says, find the voltage of the battery necessary to cause this reaction to happen. So everyone look at your reduction potential table. You're going to find the reduction one, the second one, as is on the table. You're going to have to find the reverse of the oxidation one on the table. So I'm going to pause the video until we get these numbers. So the first reaction is an oxidation reaction. It was found to have a reduction in potential of 1.229 volts. However, since it's oxidation, we made it negative. The reduction of water, as is on the table, was negative 0.828. So what is our voltage? What? Negative what? Negative 2.057 volts. So what does this tell you? Non-spontaneous. That's why we need an electric current to make this happen. That's why this has to be done in an electrolytic cell. So the last thing we need to do is add this up to get our overall equation. <coughs> Um, you might want to know how to do this. Just saying. So multiply by, what do we have to do to add these? Multiply the bottom by 2. So we get a 4 here, a 4 here, a 2 here, and a 4 here. When we add these up, we get 6 waters. The H, the, I'm sorry, the electrons cancel. We get an O2 plus two H2s. What does four H's and four OH's make? Plus four waters. So we could clean house, leaving us with two waters.
the net is the equation, the overall equation representing the electrolysis of water. Now I want to actually draw an electrolytic cell for you, and we're going to electrolyze water. In our vats, and what's different here is we only have one vat as opposed to two, we're going to have the need for a voltaic cell or a power supply. Okay. The power supply has positive and negative on it, and that translates to the positive and negative on the electrodes. Okay, so we have water in here. I'm going to make it blue. Blue. All right. Okay, now we're going to electrolyze this water. In electrolysis, we have to look into EPA van. Do you all remember what that stood for? No. Environmental Protection Agency is correct, but it's not what we're using it here for. Electrolytic positive anode, voltaic anode negative. Since we are in an electrolytic cell, the anode is positive. So this plus is the anode, and this negative is the cathode. It's, back, it's different than it was in voltaic cells. But the good news is everything else is the same. Anode still has oxidation at it. Cathode still has reduction at it. Electrons still flow from anode to cathode. So the anode is still oxidation. The cathode is still reduction. Now what's the deal with these electrodes? These are actually inert substances that act as surfaces for electrolysis to happen. They're not actually part of the reaction. So you can use platinum. You can use titanium, all sorts of stuff. Okay. So knowing now that we just have water in here, water is the only thing available to be oxidized or reduced. I think of this battery. All these little dots are chihuahuas. And this battery holds all the chihuahuas. Okay. And then there's a chihuahua up there that you can see. See the chihuahua? So when the electrons or chihuahuas run through the system, and we go from anode to cathode, we're flowing that direction, the chihuahuas will attack the substance. In this case, it's attacking water. So water has to be reduced and water has to be oxidized. When water is oxidized, oxidized, what gas is made? Oxygen. So we will literally have oxygen coming off of this electrode. Looking at that half reaction, we know that we also have a bunch of H pluses kind of surrounding this little guy here because it's acidic. What's coming off of the cathode reduction? What gas? H2 gas is coming off. And what's surrounding the cathode? OH minuses. So you can actually, I don't encourage you doing lots of experimentation at home, but if you decided you wanted to take a 9-volt battery, hook some alligator clips to some pencil lead, some graphite, okay, and put it in water, you could see the electrolysis happen. Then if you put a little phenothaline around the cathode, you'd see foggy pink colored because it turns pink in basic solutions. So it would be really cool to see. You're welcome to do that. You can't really hurt anybody when you do that. Don't eat the phenothaline because it reacts the same way that x flax does. Okay, so any questions on this? So our chihuahuas have no choice but to attack the water, right? Again, you all need to learn these half reactions. These aren't going anywhere. And I'll show you how it's going to take, they're going to take part in all the rest of these that we're going to do today. So let's move to the next. We're going to do four different electrolytic cells. You're going to get fast, fast at this, and you're not going to necessarily have to draw out the cell every time. We're going to draw the first couple. But one thing I want you to understand about our chihuahuas, our chihuahuas, does everyone now know why I have that as our online password? It's because we use it here. That's where it comes from. No, I don't secretly love chihuahuas. No, I don't love chihuahuas. They're like little yippy. The electrons are like yip, 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 and that's what they remind me of. For those of you who love chihuahuas out there, I'm sorry. I just, I like big dogs. I like dogs with substance. All right. So the thing is, people at home can't hear all your commentary, so we need to go on. Um, chihuahuas are hungry, right? 
at the end of the day, they have to eat. They have to redu be reduced and oxidized. Well, they're not themselves. Electrons themselves aren't reduced and oxidized. But the metaphor is something has to be attacked because the chihuahuas have to eat. So chihuahuas will attack whatever's there. If there's no option, they're going to go for it. But there are two things they're afraid of. They're afraid of bears. There's two types of bears. There's two types of bears. The bears are your group one and two metal ions, and there's polyatomics. So the chihuahuas will only attack the bears if there's nothing else to eat. If they've got something else there to eat, they're going to be safe and attack what else is there. And usually that's going to be water. They'll have a choice of a bear or water. They're going to go for the water. Okay? The bears are very scary. You can see the bear. See the bear up there? And there's water. Is it water cute? It's very cute. And that right there, what is, who do you think that is? No? It's polyatomic. Oh, oh she's, she's really negative. See? Anyway, so let's look at, draw this first electrolytic cell. It's of molten sodium chloride. We are electrolyzing molten sodium chloride. What does that mean, molten? Liquefied, melted. Why do we have to melt it? Not react. What's going? Chihuahuas, electrons are running through it, right? So we cannot run electrons through a solid like that. Ions can't flow. Electrons can't flow through the solid, so it has to be molten. We have to get that salt. What are we doing when we melt it? What are we breaking? We're breaking that lattice, okay? So let's go ahead and start this. It is very warm in here. We got an email from somebody that our HVAC system isn't working today. So yes, we are suffering. So we're going to connect this to a power supply. This is one indication that if you see a power supply on the table or on your diagram on the AP, it is an electrolytic cell. Students were really confusing that on the AP, thinking it was a voltmeter or something. I don't know. But it will say the words power supply on it. Plus, no. I mean, you can, but you need to be careful with that because if you draw it in, in that much, the question was, can we draw like a battery in physics? You can, but you need to be careful because if you don't put the, if you're going to be that detailed and don't do the correct side positive and negative, they're going to count you off. My vote is keep it simple, stupid. Really. No, I'm not calling him stupid. I'm saying, oh gosh, y'all. All right, so. In the vat, we have molten sodium chloride. So what's the only thing floating around in here? Molten sodium chloride. What's in it? Na, no, not NACL. Na plus and Cl minus. So the chihuahuas running through this are not real thrilled because what's going on with Na plus? That's a bear. But he doesn't have a choice. They have got to attack. They've got to reduce something and they've got to oxidize something. So those electrons. Um, are going to be transferred between these things. So this is positive. Positive is the anode. Oxidation occurs here. Negative is the cathode. Reduction occurs here. Electrons are going to flow from anode to cathode. All right. Um, when you, it's really easy. Things that are reduced are the metals. Things that are are oxidized are the polyatomics or the anions. Okay. So. The reduction half reaction is going to be sodium being reduced. So what, what's the equation when sodium is reduced? Plus one electron gives you Na. So you are going to have sodium deposited onto the cathode. This is our primary way of producing sodium for laboratories. Why don't you think we can just go outside and collect it? It's very reactive. You don't find sodium just hanging out because the second it hits any sort of moisture, it reacts. Okay? So this is also, this whole electrolysis process is how we plate jewelry. So you take your jewelry, say your ring, we'll hang our ring in the little system, 
and we'll choose not sodium. I don't think a sodium ring would be the most healthy ring to wear, but you choose a metal that um, a surface, a cheap surface. I don't know. Usually they have. You talk about gold plated stuff. It's like a I don't even know the content of the metal. It's some cheap alloy. You'll hang it in here, and then you'll take a silver solution or a gold solution, and then it'll be deposited on that ring. Okay, so that's how they do electrolysis. But anyway, I digress. What's going to be oxidized? The chlorine. That's all there is. So Cl negative. What is it going to be oxidized to? It's negative one. It has to go up in charge. It's going to go to Cl2. Two negatives plus two electrons. Okay, so chlorine gas is produced at this electrode. Hmm, chlorine gas. I that's good. Okay, um, with this, I was going to say something. Hold on. What doing electrolytic cells like this allow you to do are now. Those, I don't know if you remember from AP equations, I told you to skip any problem that said electrolysis. Do you remember that? Yep, no, y'all are lying, you don't remember. Okay, so the AP equation you would get would be, what are the products of the electrolysis of molten sodium chloride? You'd write Na plus, plus Cl minus, but what are our products? Na plus Cl2. This one's easy because um, this one's an easy one because there's only one thing to choose from. Where they'll get tougher is once we throw water in the mix, and I'll show you how to do those. And we're going to treat those as AP equations as well. All we really care about in in this whole electro in this whole electrolysis business is what products we make. Okay, we don't care how we get there. We don't care how many amps it takes. We just want want to know how to make the product and how to make the product in the best way possible. This is a cr good crossover, and you're going to actually be doing a little bit of physics in a minute here once I get through these electrolytic cells. Um, I know, gross. Aqueous sodium chloride now. We're going to electrolyze that. So we're going to have, this is the last one we're going to full-blown draw. We're going to have our battery plus minus. That makes this a plus and this a minus. And it can be minus plus. I'm just keeping pluses on the left. Um, this then is the anode, this is oxidation, this is a cathode, this is reduction. We have a solution of sodium chloride, so it's a little bit different. What's different? We have water in here in addition to Na plus and Cl minus. Okay, so now the now the little chihuahuas have some options. They don't have to attack the big bad bad bear. What are the two things that could be oxidized in here? Water and Cl minus. What are the two things that could be reduced? Water and Na plus. So, looking at the cathode, who's going to be reduced? Water. Because sodium is a bear, and chihuahuas are afraid of bears and won't attack unless it's, unless it's an option, unless they have to, unless there's no option. Look at the anode. Is chloride a polyatomic? No. Why drink water when you could have chloride? So, life lessons for chem from chemistry. Okay. So water is just like, okay. I'm too scared of the bear, I'll just drink water. It's like me giving up caffeine. I'm like, ah, I don't want to start the caffeine again because I know it's bad, so I'll just drink water. All right. Okay, so what is our product then on the anode? Cl2 gas is coming off of the anode. And what is the product at the cathode? Be careful, we are reducing water now. H2 gas. And OH minus kind of hovering around that electrode. So this would be in addition to your little home experiment. You could put a little table salt into some water and do it. And you'd actually, it's okay, it's not a lot of chlorine, you're not going to die. You'll actually smell like a little swimming pool when you're doing it. And that's the chlorine gas coming off. Hmm, chlorine gas. And then you would see the, um, and it's not enough hydrogen to blow anything up with, so you can do that too. Um, 
And with phenothalin, again, you'd see the pink surrounding that electrode. It's good stuff. So this would be a perfect example of a really difficult AP equation that up until this point you couldn't do. The AP equation would say, when what would the products be when a solution of sodium chloride is electrolyzed? What would you do? Well, water's in the mix now. And you'd be like, before you'd be like, why do I put water in it? I don't understand. And your sodium chloride. So what products are produced? We know water is going to be chosen over the sodium, so that's going to make H2 plus OH minus. Chlorine is going to go to, chloride is going to go to chlorine. Did we need the sodium in this equation? No. So that would be the AP equation we'd have to balance. Do you see why you would not have gotten that before? You would have been like, when do you put water in when it says solution? We've never done that. Now you know why, because the chihuahua is embarrassed. And again, that has to be balanced. Okay, so we're going to do this again, but now I'm just going to write the equation for it. I don't think we need to keep drawing these out. Um, for C, aqueous iron 3 sulfate. Aqueous, I'm going to use a different color. I'm in the mood for colors today on a Friday. Aqueous, we include water. Iron 3, what do I write for iron 3 sulfate? Plus, okay. So, what are my two possibilities for reduction? Water and iron. So what are we going to reduce? Iron because why, why have water when you can have iron? So we're going to take that down to zero. All right. And then we have for oxidation possibilities, sulfate and water. Oh, what is sulfate? That's a bear. It's a polyatomic. So we're going to go ahead and oxidize water. When we oxidize water, what do we make? O2 and H+. Plus. Where is this produced at the anode or the cathode, the iron? Reduction cathode. Therefore, these are produced at the anode. Got it? All right, so that was part C. Yeah, we don't need to balance it right now. I mean, I just want you to understand the production right now. When we get to, now you're going to start getting AP equation practice, which we're going to start picking up again once we're done with organic, and you're going to have to do, do some of these now. I'm glad you've missed it. It's coming back just for you, Garrett. All right, aqueous sodium sulfate, H2O plus what? Plus the 4, 2 minus. Oh, two bears. So what does that mean? It just oxidizes and reduces water. So we get H2 plus OH minus, I mean plus o, O2, excuse me. We don't have to worry about the H plus and the OH minus because they're going to end up combining. Remember the overall equation before, how they ended up combining and went away? So we do not need that. Okay, so this one's a little bit easier to balance. So talk about a confusing AP equation. You'd be like, where's the sodium and the sulfate? Well, now you know. Good? Okay, now let's bring our physics and chemistry worlds come colliding here. Let's bring them together. This is good stuff. This is good stuff. You'll like it. The main thing you need to know to be able to do these, these are all dimensional analysis problems. It's where physics and chemistry come together. We use physics and their amps and their whole flow of electrons and time and all that stuff to produce a product in chemistry that we want to use. So we're looking at product production and how to make that better. Um, with these, you need to know what an amp is. What's an amp? A coulomb per second. So anytime you see amp in a problem, I want you to change it to coulomb per second immediately. Another thing you need to know is that Faraday. What was the Faraday? Okay, that's the number, 96,500, but what was it? What is that? Right, it's the charge of the mole of electrons. So 96,500 coulombs is equal to one mole 
of electrons. This is our connection between the physics world and the chemistry world right here. Okay, that's our link. So let's start this number 13 up top. Calculate the mass of copper metal. Okay, so we're looking for the grams of copper produced during the passage of 2.5 amps of current through a solution of copper 2 sulfate for 50 minutes. The first thing you need is, an, is a half reaction equation describing this. We're making copper from copper 2. So what would that half reaction be? Okay, so you'll see why you need this in a second. This is just dimensional analysis. Y'all are going to think this is so easy. Um, what's the simplest number? We know that an amp is actually a coulomb per second. So that's kind of a double unit. So the easiest one to start, I always start with my simple numbers that only have one unit. So I'm going to start with 50 minutes. I want to make this number something that I could use based on what you know a coulomb, I mean an amp is, what should you convert this to? Second. So for every one minute, I have 60 seconds. Now what can I do? Convert to coulombs. So for every 2.50 coulombs, I'm getting that from the problem that's provided up there, I have one second. Now I'm in the world of coulombs. I need to get to the world of chemistry. Faraday. 96,500 coulombs is a charge of one mole of electrons. Here's why we needed the balanced equation. Boom, boom. We're trying to find grams of that. Mole bridge, what's that ratio? Two moles of electrons, I have one mole of copper. Now how do I go from moles of copper to grams of copper? Molar mass. What's the molar mass of copper to two decimal places? 63.55 grams. All right. We're there. Let's calculate. Isn't that fun, though? I think it's kind of cool. Worlds have combined. Not sexy, just cool. Not sexy cool. <laughs> the answer is... 2.4, it's doing that wacky thing where I write and it doesn't write what I write. It is freaking out because the problem's so cool. All right, 2.47 grams. Okay, let's do another one. What volume of oxygen gas measured at STP, what does that mean? 22.4 liters is equal to what? One mole. What volume of oxygen gas is produced by the oxidation of water that occurs concurrently with the above problem? Well, I thought we were oxidizing copper 2 sulfate. Why are we oxidizing water? What's a bear? The sulfate. So the copper was reduced, but now the, the water has to be oxidized. So we are going to take and figure out the exact same problem, we have the same conditions, the same amps, the same time, but we need to deal with what happens when water is oxidized, and we need a balanced equation for that. So let's practice that oxidation water half reaction. When it's oxidized, we make oxygen, and it's acidic, and then to balance that, we need a 2 here, a 4 there, and four electrons. So we've got to have that balanced half reaction in order to know the ratio of electrons to whatever it is we're trying to produce. We've got to have that mole ratio in order to do these problems. So conditions are going to be the same. So I'm going to repeat. I still have 50 minutes. I still have 60 seconds in a minute. It's occurring in an exact, at the exact same time as that previous thing we just did. We are still in a cell that has 2.50 amps, so that's coulombs per second. There are still 96,500 coulombs for every one mole of electrons. What's different here? We have four moles of electrons to every one mole of O2. The question wants liters, so now what? For every one mole 
Although, too, because we're at STP, we have 22.4 liters. So, give me the answer to 366. 0 0.435? 0 0.435 liters. Let me ask you something. What if we were not at STP and they said you're at 300K and 1.3 ATM? What would you do differently? Perv nerd. Where would you stop though? What would you solve for? Exactly. You'd stop here and just get to the moles. Take those moles of oxygen, plug them into perv nerd, PV equals NRT with the conditions listed, and solve for volume. Last problem. This is the sexy problem of the unit. Oh, we're going to skip 15. You, you want to do it, Garrett? Okay. Number, number 16 is the sexy problem of the unit. This is not sexothermic, but it's pretty sexy. An aqueous solution of an unknown salt of chromium is electrolyzed by a current of 3 amps for one hour. The process produces 1.94, is that a 4, grams of chromium metal at the cathode. What is the oxidation state of chromium? Wow. It's sexy. So here's the question. Let's write up, we don't know the oxidation state, but we can still kind of pretend to write up a half reaction. So if we add chromium, we don't know that, right? Do we know this, X? No. So how could I write a reduction half reaction, though? Because Xc minus gives us chromium, all right? So we need to figure out what that X is. All right. Chromium, we're making 1.94 grams of it. Does anybody have any ideas? Convert what to moles? Convert the chromium to moles. OK, so we'll get moles of this. Let's go ahead and do that. It's 52. Yeah, 52, 50 dose. So moles is 0 0.0373 of chromium. How does that help us, though? What else can we do? To find what? Use Kulin's amps in time to find moles of electrons. Let's do that. We can find, and it's not going to be, the moles of electrons we find is an x, but we can use the ratio of this to this, because that's what it is. Right? So let's go ahead and first find moles of electrons. We're going to start with the time. So we've got an hour. Let's go to seconds. How many seconds in an hour? There's 3,600 seconds in an hour. How many amps? Three coulombs per second. And to get moles of electrons for every 96,500 coulombs, there's one mole of electrons. So let's go ahead and get me that number. 0 0.01112. 0 0.112 moles of electrons. Now we can't say that's the oxidation state because that's the number of moles of electrons. It's really not. The true moles of the electrons are the ratio of this to this. So the ratio of moles of electrons to moles of chromium is going to be what X is supposed to be. So moles of electron is 0.112. Moles of chromium is 0.0373. You should get pretty darn close to a whole number. 3.00, so that's our oxidation state. It's not fractional. It's plus 3. Real life, you're going to get your 3.003. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's very close to a whole number. But that's pretty cool, isn't it? All right. <clears throat> All right. Day is done. We don't have a lecture until after spring break. This is the last lecture until after spring break. Because next week we have a quiz on Monday, quiz on Tuesday, review on Wednesday, test on Thursday. Party on Friday lab on Friday. We're making voltaic cells on Friday. That's a party. Chihuahuas and bears? Woo! No, that's electrolytic cells, but whatever. <laughs>